Okay, we're both live. Check test one, two, three. I don't see you there. You hear yourself coming back after that for a few seconds. Check test four, five, six. So, yeah. Well, I still want you to hear. Oh. Check test. Check test. Okay, let me see if we can get some chats going here. <laughs> it says the stream is slowed down again. Wouldn't you know? How about that? Yeah, but it's, I don't know what you're listening to. Is that on YouTube? Hmm. Yeah, it just says the streams is only 1.235 megabits, which is slower than the recommended. So I don't know why it's got it turned down. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't think there's any video that's going to be happening, but we'll we'll work on that. He'll just have to go over. I'm just going to go.
Steve White, no echo today. Well, thank you, Steve. One ninety Mama said there might be days like this, Grace. Mama said there might be days like this, Grace. An echo has started. Oh, there, um, YouTube just popped back up. Now it's went down again. Don't you know the first day?
Check, check, one, two, three. Okay. Yay, we've got audio. Cutting it down to that last second. John Shrips. Hello, Stephen. Who else is with us today? Hey, 
Anybody out there on Facebook land? Hi, Larry. One minute and count. Whoosh, that was a close one. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, it's Michael here at Bridge Hands, and welcome you to another day on April 16th, I think it is. We've gone through the tax day, and we're off heading for the summer here before you know it. So today we're going to have a something new, but it's going to kind of build on what we had yesterday. If you remember, we talked about the different type of stamen. That was the garbage statement. And so today we're going to take a look at balancing seat bids. And it's going to be more than one day. There's a lot to balancing seat bids, as you might be aware. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the basics when you're in pass out seat. That's what a balancing seat bid is. And we're going to talk about what the um, objectives are, what we're trying to do, and what some of the opportunities to do something well. That is to make some extra points, either by having our partners have a fit with us or where we have the opponents bid up just a little bit too high and they'll respect us in the morning. So let's go ahead and take a look at the slideshow first of all, and we'll do some of our chalk talk and then we'll give some hands. Um, one of them that uh, Eddie Cantor prepared some years ago and it's out there on the internet. I thought it would be very one nice one to use and we'll take a look at some of our are typical where we have some pre-dealt hands and see if we want to take a look at some of those as time allows. So, okay, balancing seat, pass out bids. Here we go. First off, we want to be sure that, and I don't know if I have the right screen here. Let's see if I got the right screen. Let's go. Here we go. There we go. Um, the idea is we don't want to sell out to the opponents, not too cheaply. We want them to do it the old fashioned way. We want them to earn it. So the idea is, is that, you know, it's, you want it to be a competitive auction back in, oh, I guess it was about 1930s is when um, Vanderbilt was over on a uh, yacht, a big yacht. He was a famous uh, sailing person. And he said, well, you know, rather than uh, the old bridge, let's go ahead and make an auction bridge where there is a vulnerability with risk and reward. And that was where we had our modern bridge that we play today. So yeah, we want to win the auction, or at least if anything else, we'd like to get some lead direction if they do win the auction. So we want to find out where we have a fit, which kind of direction we want, make it so we're just not leading in the blind if possible. And if we can, we want to learn more about the opponents with their bidding rather than just giving it to them say two of a minor or something like that. We would like to learn more about their hands also so we can mount our best defense. And um, as far as the pressure, yes, we don't want any free lunches today. We want them to go ahead and do it that old fashioned way to earn that contract. So if we can push them to the odd level, they say the odd level belongs to the opponents rather than give it to them for like two diamonds, make them go to three diamonds. Or if we can go to two spades, make them have to go to three hearts, whatever it is. And they might just go down. Okay. So we want to make the opponents that earn that bid. And so let's take a look at some of the possible bids then in the pass out seat. Well, we can bid the higher ranking suit, especially where we have a five card suit. So if it goes um, one heart pass pass and we have five spades, well, certainly we can bid that suit at the same level. Great. If it happens to be where it's a lower ranking suit, well, now we've got to go to the next level suit. So if they do one spade, and we've got five clubs, and typically we're going to have 12 points or more 
if we're in the pass out seat, we can have a little bit less because we want to be the hero. We want to keep that auction going and alive. So it has to be a five bagger. If you're at the two level, don't do it with a four card suit. And um, we would normally have about 13 points, but in the pass out seat, we'll talk more about relaxing our requirements. Okay, if we are jumping to two hearts or two spades with either uh, a good or a medium opener, the same hand as the opener when they are bidding two hearts or two spades in the fours beat. Well, that's a mouthful. What does that mean? I've mentioned to you on previous days, if it goes pass, 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 and we do two hearts or two spades, that shows a good opener. It ought to be not just like a punky 11, 12 point hands. You can just pass, right? So when you've got a hand with two defensive tricks and at least a good five card suit, you know, you've got maybe about seven losers. You maybe don't have a suit quality of nine yet. You're not sure that you have a great fit with partner, but you can play at least in two hearts or two spades and four seats you would bid it. So similarly, if you're in the balancing seat and it goes one club, pass, pass, two hearts or two spades, same thing applies. This is not like a preemptive bid. You could just pass. So when you have just a okay hand, you can bid the one heart, one spade. And when you have a nicer hand, you have some interest in game with your partner in the pass out seat, just like if you're passed out with nobody bidding, it shows a better hand. And that's something that is a partnership agreement. So if you've never played with them before and you don't think they're too good on these kind of concepts, you haven't got a chance to talk with them, you might not want to spring it on them, but it's a good way to play with your more advanced partners. Grace, you have something coming up. Comment. Comments coming through. Okay, let's see if I can get some of these up here. I'm, I'm hoping and I'm wondering, is everybody doing okay on I have it YouTube? on the screen already. I'm not sure what you just said. I have it up. I just had, no, it didn't. I just put it up. Okay. So, okay. So um, here we go. John Shribs, I think he's got something coming up. And it says, when two spades in four seat after they have bid two clubs or higher. Well, if um, they've already have like a two club opener, it's a whole different bid. Or if it's gone one club, two clubs, and then pass, pass, and we're in the four seat. No, now we're not making a jump bid. So it wouldn't apply there. So I hope that helps a little bit. And let's see if I have anything coming up on Facebook. Uh, I think we're okay there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Um, thanks for that question, John, and I hope that clarifies it. We'll have some examples that will, I think, help some. So a jump to two no trump in the four seat. No, that's not unusual. <laughs> if it goes one club and then I do two no trump, that is unusual for the two lower suits. Typically, most of everybody plays it where it's the two lowest not bid suits, which would be hearts and diamonds, the red suits. But if it's in the pass out seat, it just doesn't make sense to make it unusual there. So um, you can take a look at some good books. In fact, I maybe will have to dig out my Mike Lawrence book on balancing seat bids. But he says it should be 19 to 21. I think that's pretty much everybody agrees. So if you're in the pass out seat, you want to have that two no trump opening type of hand, 19 to 21, and your partner can do transfers and the rest. Yes, Grace. John says jump to two spades with five cards. Question? Um, well, it could be a five card suit. So that uh, going back to where we were at before. Um, so if it's one, let's say heart, pass, pass, two spades in the pass out seat. You certainly could have a five card suit there. I would hope it wouldn't be king five times, you know, but it would be something a little bit better than that. If you only have king five times, I'm wondering if you shouldn't be in um, one no trump because you probably have some in that heart suit, but that's something we'll get to later. So save those just a little bit, John. Good questions, but just um, let me catch up um, to where you're at. Okay, so some possible bids in the pass out seat. One, the takeout double, of course. So if you have normally um, 11 points or more, and you remember you're not going to have uh, a double tin and a side suit. We don't do any of those, what that's called the dreaded off shape doubles, except when you have 17 points or more, because then you make a double. And when they bid that suit, you bid something else and say, aha, I have more than 17 or at least a good 17. And I know that if I had bid just that suit at the one level, you might pass with eight points. And if I have 17, 18, we have a good chance for game. So that's when you use the off shape double when you have a really big hand. I like to call it a type two double. 
But when you're in the pass out seat, now we're going to borrow that three points from our partner, that virtual king. Um, and we're going to say we can do it with less versus if we were in the direct seat, you know, it went one heart by my righty and I've got four spades. Um, I would like to have normally about 11 points with a double 10, maybe 10 points with a singleton. If you've got some good values, don't do it with seven or eight points, please. Because when they go to game and I've got 10 or 11 points, and I double them and they make it. It's like, Oh, I only had five points partner. No, don't do it with substandard. But when you're in the pass out seat, your partner should remember that you're borrowing three points from them. And we'll talk about that next. So if it's one club or one diamond, and I wanted to bid one no trump, a balancing seat bid, where I have like two stoppers, at least one and a half stopper in that club suit, then I might be able to do that with um, 12 or, four, or 11 to 14 points um, and not to have the 15 to 17. Why? because I could make that takeout double, couldn't I? Our goodness forbid I have to bid a four card major or something like that, but I have a lot of room to bid. But when it's one heart or one spade, now there's not much room. <laughs> if it was hearts, I don't have the spade. And if I bid spades, I've got to go to the two level. So now if I do one no trump, I still might be the 11 to 14, but now I might want to make it go up to 15 or 16 because the takeout double, my partner can no, no longer come in at the one level. And by the way, the person in the pass out seat, we call that the balancer or the balancing seat bid. And the partner of the balancer is called the advancer. They advance it afterwards. So if they're bidding Stamen or Jacoby transfers or whatever, that's the advancer seat. So the idea, and I, you don't have to memorize these, but I just want you to think about the concept and just think if it makes sense to you. If you're going to be where you're making a balancing seat, no Trump bid, and it happens to be where they're in hearts or spades, where you can't really use the double very effectively there, where you could if it was one club or one diamond. There's two or three suits left. So that's why there's different ranges that you would have. And we'll talk later, maybe not today, about how to use these with some bids and some rebids, which obviously gets a little bit more sophisticated. But just think about the concept. If it's one club or one diamond, I can bid one no trump with his view is 14 points. If it's one heart or one spade, because we can't do much at the one level, now it's going to be 11 to 16 points. Okay, well, I hope that helps. We'll get some examples here to kind of make some more, um, I guess, some specifics, hopefully tie this in. So, um, and as you recall, um, a jump to the two hearts or two spades is with that good to medium opener and that we talked about before, excuse me, the advancer, it should say there. So, okay, uh, Q bidding, hmm. that promises shape and possibly strength. So if it goes one club, pass, pass, two clubs, uh, or one heart, pass, pass, two hearts, you know, those still typically have your normal meaning. Some people might say, oh, I'd really like to play it where it's just natural. I've got six clubs. Um, but you'll get more utility, I think, to use where it's the Michael's Qubit in that situation. Okay, well, I hope that gives us some of the basics. I'm not going to have us where we have to commit this to memory, but let's just go ahead and just take a look today. We're going to go through this in more specificity, uh, maybe on Friday, but um, let's take a look after the, uh, it goes one club, pass, pass, and I bid one no trump. Remember, that's 11 to 14. Or one heart, pass, pass, one no trump, which is 11 to 16. That's a big range, six points. I mean, how do you do that? So we have some ways to see if it's a high end or a low end. And that's kind of what we're going to be talk, kind of talking about. But first off, if I bid um, one no trump in the pass out seat, transfers are still on. And it should be just like if it wasn't in the pass out seat. If it makes sense to play transfers, it makes sense to play transfers. If, you know, I I start off one no trump and you bid two hearts, it's a transfer to spade. So if it's one club, pass, pass, one no trump, and you go two hearts, transfer to spades. Okay, so given that transfers are always worth using, regardless of the balancing partner's range, when I bid one no trump in the balancing seat, next up is, um, if I can get the moving here, here we go. When advancer has less than eight points, because I can't have more than 16 for this bid, if it's one of the major, 
or I can only have up to 14 if it's where they open one of the minor, then just go ahead and do your transfer, and um, that's the end of it. You pass. We may have a 5-2 fit, but hey, no different than Jacoby transfers if there was no bid by the opponent. So I believe they still should be on. I'll give an example, but I should say this. You remember maybe about a week ago, I said that when you play one of a minor, and this is just, we start off, you bid one of a minor, and I bid two no trump. And that is invitational. That's the way everybody plays it today. In 50, 60 years ago, it was a game forcing, but, you know, that didn't make sense. You could bid three no trump for that. So the idea is, is that we said standard American yellow card. They still did it the old-fashioned way, which was game forcing. Most people just play standard American. They don't realize it's not standard American yellow card. Similarly, in standard American yellow card, there's no transfers after um, a no Trump overcall. So what I'm telling you is the way I think it should be played. But if somebody insists upon standard American yellow card and they really know the transfers are off, which doesn't seem to make sense, that's something to keep in the back of your mind. But I think everybody would say, oh, I play standard American yellow card, but they still think transfers are on. Go figure. At any rate, the example. So one something by lefty, one banana. Pass, pass. I do one no Trump. Pass. If you bid two diamonds or two hearts, it's still a transfer to two hearts or two spades by me. And that's where you're going to sign off. There are some different bids, though, when you have the invitational and the game forcing bids. And um, think about it. Well, how might that work? Well, it's called the either inquiry statement or the range statement bid, and it's where we need to see my range because um, I could have a range of 11 to 14, that's four point range, okay, if it's opening of a minor, but if it's one of a major, it's got that six point range. What are we gonna do to handle that? So we have to be able to have a way to tell whether I am strong or I am weak. And if you play, um, oh, what's another bid would be good? Um, Drury. If you use Drury or reverse Drury type of thing, it's like, you know, that person in the third seat, did they have a real hand or were they kind of punky? Were they less than their normal values. And same with the range inquiry statement, this is what we do. So given that in the balancing seat, I may need to borrow a king from you, three points, then that's something you may need to think about whether you, when you do your bids, is I've borrowed a king. You don't know unless you do some kind of a range because six points, goodness forbid. How are you gonna know how to bid? Not very well, right? That is a predicament. So once I borrowed it, though, just beware is that I may have borrowed it. If you don't play this, don't assume that, oh, I'm going to still continue to use my king because you just don't really know. You're going to, you just have to wing it. And if you don't want to learn this or at least understand the concepts with your partner, then I guess, you know, good luck to you. That's all you can do. But you can see where more advanced players, they're not going to be caught up in this situation. And that's where the range inquiry statement has its place. So the impact is where one no Trump has the greater range, 11 to 14, okay, that's four, but um, 11 to 16, when they open a major, that is a big range. So um, another thing we should have be aware of is that is when I double and then I bid another suit or no Trump. So if it was one club and I'm saying my range is 11 to 14 when I'm balancing one no Trump, what if I have 15 to 17? Aha, that's where I double first and you bid one heart or one spade. And I do one no trump. And you say, oh, it was a real 15 to 17 point after all. It wasn't this 11 to 16. And I hope that starts to make sense on how this all works. So if it happens to be one heart or one spade, remember that's where it's that 11 to 16 point range. And now is where we use the range inquiry statement which I'd like to do, but I see it's 17 minutes after the hour, and we want to get into some hands today. So I want to take a look at an example of a balancing seat bid. So let's go over to the table. Deep finesse, and um, where do I want to put myself here? There we go. That looks pretty good, and see if we can get, um, first of all, the hands that hide them a little bit. And who's going to be the dealer on this? I think East is going to be the dealer. So here we go. Okay, East, you have a five, four, three, one hand and uh, looks reasonably good, doesn't it? I like the hearts, ace, king, jack, nine. So um, we have some opportunities on that suit. 
So there we see we have um, six, seven, eight points. In the clubs, um, king five times, mm, okay, sure, three. Um, same on the diamond suit and the none for the singleton jack, that's for sure. So um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So yeah, we're going to open the ubiquitous one club bid in that seat. Okay, over to the south end. South is, um, well, it's a four, four, three, two. Yes, we like that we have the majors, but with a king and a queen, that's um, three and two is five. And then another five for the clubs. Um, hmm. Yeah, you sure don't want to make a takeout double because your partner may end up bidding the diamond. So you don't want to bid um, that suit because they started with a club. So even if you had a singleton in the club suit, yeah, it's kind of, hmm, well, you might do it if you had the, Clubs and the diamonds reverse, but not with this hand. So you, my friend, are going to do a nice pass smoothly in tempo. Okay, over to the um, west hand. What's with all the X's? It kind of looks like some kind of um, movie for seniors or, um, I don't know, some drink or something. Let's get make those X's into something else. There. Yeah, I guess they call them inconsequential cards that don't really matter. Okay, that looks a little better. Now we can see some values anyway. All those X's, what was that all about? Okay, so it's a pass. And oops, I didn't show that hand though. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I wanted to show the West hand. There it is. Jack six times in diamonds, three clubs to the nine, eight, um, two hearts and two spades. And Grace has a comment. Okay, we're good now. I'm sorry for that. Thanks for catching that. Okay, to the north hand, we are in the pass out seat, and this is what this lesson is all about. And here you go. One club pass pass, and you have six points in spades plus another two distribution. I love the 10 also. Hearts, nada. Clubs, maybe two. Um, diamonds, oh, nice. There's um, six, although remember the only person bidding is a person to our left. So I don't know if that finesse is going to work. So, but anyway, I can see we have eight and another um, plus two plus maybe the better part of six. So that's about 16 points. That's pretty good. Wow. That sounds like about the high end of our range, doesn't it? That's counting the distribution points. But um, what do you all want to bid? So that was a one club pass, pass. Please let me know. Inquiring minds must know. What would you like to bid? Let's get what's some the comments. Delay, Grace? Up. We got about um, ten to fifteen seconds out there. Eight seconds on YouTube, so okay, we eight can. Eight second. Okay. Hello, Sandra, out there um, in snowy Colorado, ten inches. Woo -hoo. Anybody have a bid that they want to share with us? What they would do in the four seat. How about it, Larry? You got a bid for us? Hey, I see one there from Patty. My brave girl, Patty. Patty says... Oh, we got a few. Two spades. And John agrees? Hey, how about that? No wonder. Um, they do a lot of tournaments going out of the area, out of the state. I don't know, maybe they even out of the world. Larry is like, I think maybe one spade is um, enough. And um, I think... Sandra is also a one spade bidder. So yeah, we have some different ideas on that. Well, here, let's say that you were going to do one spade. Well, the question would be is after you do one spade, hmm, if your partner hmm, has like eight to 10 points, they might think, well, hmm, maybe we should just play in one spade. I don't know. Maybe they would do two spades if they had some support. Maybe they wouldn't. But you recall that we said earlier that if you were um, in the pass out, no bid by the opponents, just pass, 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 and you had this hand, I would like you to do two spades. Um, Grace, you have a comment. We have Walter on Facebook, and he is giving us one spade, and Mary is giving us one spade. Um, one spade, but the lesson says, well, I know Trump, I think Wal Walter says, so I see that. And then... Uh, Mary also is a one spader. So, hey, I think most of you got me overruled. This is going to be one spade, isn't it? So let's take a look at that and see if I can persuade you to bid differently. So um, first off, you know, try not to have too many different agreements and different scenarios. Remember I told you about Eddie Cantor, who actually made this hand. He designed some wonderful hands. I don't know if you know, but he has shoe boxes. He, 
he doesn't have the file system so much, but he takes things and he puts them in the shoe boxes. And uh, so he gets these hands out and he then makes wonderful defensive and offensive plays also, um, declare a play, I should say. So in this case, he would say that if you were in the fourth seat and nobody has bid, you were going to be wanting to make a two spade call because why? Because if your partner has three tricks, they can pr produce they want. Also, number two is that you want it to be where you are sure that the opponents don't come in and next thing you know, they're bidding four hearts against you, right? So let's take a look at that hand. And I know, John, you're um, with us on this. You would say, well, let's look at the losing trick count. And I would say, but do you have a partnership bid yet? And he says, no, but let's look at it just on its own merit. And I think we have three honors plus six long. So that's a suit quality of nine. When we have a suit quality of nine, it is a self-sustaining suit. I mean, you're not going to lose more than two. Even if your partner's got a singleton, come on. You play it to your queen, and you hopefully get five tricks here, maybe at least um, four. So, okay, so at any rate, once you have that, what's our losers? Well, we have maybe one in spades, three in hearts, two in clubs, and by the way, even queen third, you count it as three losers, unless your partner bid the suit. If you have queen 10 third, then they say two and a half, whatever. And then in diamonds, one maybe, or maybe zero, because it depends on whether we can finesse. Who, If we can't get to partner's hand twice, though, we can't do two finesses, so don't count your, um, what is it, your chickens yet? The eggs haven't hatched? So, um, okay, but at any rate, we have probably about a mm, six, maybe seven loser. And if we want to know if our partner can come up with three tricks, if our partner has got, they can respond after two spades, then I'd say that that's, at least you know we've got an entry or two to their hand. And if they have where they can do three, that's great. So it went, what I'm suggesting is one club, pass, pass, and I'm going to show all the hands at this point. I think that should do it. And two spades. And after that, the opener, um, one club opener is not going to come back with three hearts. The reverse, especially at the three level, would be ludicrous if their partner doesn't have any points. You don't have a, enough to rebid three clubs, so that kind of shuts you out. Uh, although if it happened to be where you didn't go two spades, I could see some people saying two hearts, which isn't necessarily a reverse in this situation because your partner we know does not have six points, but you're saying, hey, um, do we want to just maybe play in that suit? But that's another story for another day. So, okay, so our partner, after hearing two spades, saying that we have a pretty good hand, not like where they borrowed a king from us, right? Remember that scenario? <laughs> Maybe the um, opener has like 19 points. And so, but you say, well, then my partner probably only has 10. I just better pass because how many points does the South have? We said five. Another two is um, seven. And then the three is um, 10. But maybe one more because you have a four card suit. So when you hear two spades, I'd say, wow, um, <laughs> this is better than if they bid one spade. And I've heard that one club by over here to my right, and I've got ace, jack, 10, and I don't hear anything coming from my left-hand opponent. So I assume there's not much going on over there. So I'm going to say, yeah, four spades. Or if you're feeling just a little bit nebulous and you don't like the, sa the saying, the one who knows goes, instead you say, well, okay, um, I've heard that. I'm going to do um, three and a half spades. <laughs> but anyway... Let's say we're going to be in four spades as the contract. And so let's see where we go with this auction. The proof of the pudding, after all, is in the east eating. So, okay, I should say is that um, the south hand is the dummy. So um, I hope that helps a little bit. And the opening lead. Well, um, yeah, you're going to lead ace from ace king. You always love to look at the dummy and see your sig signal from your partner. So ace from ace king, unless you're old school, you lead the king from ace king. And by the way, Bridge Base Online, the robots, the Ginsburg Intelligent Bridge, the Gib robots, they'll do the king. <laughs> that's that's the way they do it. They're old school. Okay, the ace. And um, we look at the dummy, and we dummy, everybody sees queen fourth. Hmm, okay. And partner over in the west, they played the two, or the eight, rather than the two. And um, I don't know if you remember this lesson from maybe several weeks ago. But that is, is that when you have queen length in the dummy, 
queen third, queen fourth, you show the count. Why do you show the count? Because you want to, your partner to know is that whether they play the king, it's going to get roughed, <laughs> then the queen gets set up. So you're starting a high-low sequence. We're playing the standard carding here. So that says, I have two. So right now, then the declarer says, well, I see four, so I know it's going to be a four, four, three, two suit. Okay, good to know. So I can play another one safely without getting roughed. Okay, so um, let me get rid of some of this stuff. <laughs> All right, and we're going to go to play um, our king. Because we believe our partner, they're playing high-low. Okay, and everybody follows, so it was a five, four, two, two. So, um, yeah, we can go ahead, and we know that the only remaining spot out is the 10 by the north hand. We can deduce this. So we can go ahead and say um, we can play the 9 or the jack. And I hope you're thinking the jack because you want to smother that 10. You play the 9, and, yeah, um, I guess they get a rough, but, yeah, you want to play the jack to smother the 10 over in that other hand. So the jack comes out. And it is roughed by a spade. Now, if you had a chance to get lead direction, you would play a low or a high in the trump. But not much for you to do here. And besides, your partner knows you're out of heart, so you have a doubleton there. So you're probably not going to get any roughs on the other suit. So no signaling is going on here by the west hand. And West has taken a look at the dummy and said, well, I don't want to lead clubs. Um, I don't have the club. And so, uh-oh. I know that my partner's got some problems. Either the declarer has the clubs or uh, my partner's going to get finessed over in the east. So, hmm, um, do I want to play a trump um, or uh, a diamond? And they play um, a diamond next to top of nothing. Don't normally like to lead away from a suit with jack, but we can see there's not that many in the dummy hand, so no biggie there. So we play the eight, and they win with the ace. Not the queen. Do not play the queen. As Eddie Cantor says, when one finesse is enough, don't try for two. <laughs> his um, wife, when it used to be his girlfriend, um, Yvonne, she would um, do a lot of what he called the practice finesses. You don't need him. You could promote a suit or you could rough, but she liked to practice the finesses. <laughs> so, no, we don't want to do a practice finesse here. Eddie would not approve. So, anyway, go up with your ace, and all you have to do is this You've got three two in clubs, and you want to pitch the club, right? You want to pitch the club. They bid the club suit, and there's not too many points over by west. So we're hoping that there is going to be a king held by the person who opens it. Didn't have to be. They would still um, pass with the king, but that's our best hope. Okay, so we go ahead and pull the trump out there, and that takes care of that. And we play the queen, and you can see... Nothing else is going to happen except making the game. So the bidding, remember, one club, pass, pass, two spades when you've got a good suit. And to answer John's question again, it could be a five-card suit. It would still be fine. Grace, you have something. We do. We have from John, except KD. Is that the one you just answered? Except KD. I don't know what that means. Except, oh, except King Ding. The, 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 the king of diamonds, I think, is the D-king. All righty. Okay, so, yeah. Expect the Diamond Kings, right, since they have made the bid. And since you didn't hear a peep over from the other hand, that would be yet another point. Very good point, John. So we always want to use the environmental factors. You remember those the other day? I spoke about environmental factors, and one of them is, you know, who's been the bidding, what's the vulnerability, all those sorts of things. And, Michael, you've gone missing. Oh, am I missing again? Hmm. Missing in action, well, okay. honey. Okay, well, let's see if I can pop myself up. Thank you, Grace. Okay, so I hope that helps to give you a little bit of a flavor. And boy, it's already 4.32, but I'm going to try just a little bit. If, for those of you who want to say, I'm not going to do any more of those types of hands, but I just want to take a look at some of these um, deep finesse that we take a look at by bringing the hands in using the Deal Master Pro, having a simulation best upon these two scenarios. Remember, one scenario is this where um, the opponent opens in a minor, and we have some stoppers or not. But when it opens of a major, then we could be 11 to 16 points. So I have somewhere the uh, left-hand opponents can open one spade, and we're going to have some stoppers and spades. And we'll spend more time on this tomorrow, but i just kind of give you a little preview on what is coming with some of our future hands. So, okay, to the uh, deal 
deep finesse and loading. And we're going to start off with the one club or one diamond opener, which gives us a whole lot of range in terms of how we can do this. So this time it's going to be our lefty is going to be the opener. And I think I had um, 12 to 15 points. And in this case, I'm not going to have a five card major because I wanted to open a minor. So I have that as one of the criteria. So um, as you can see is here, we've got a four, four, three, two and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I excluded fifteen to seventeen balance hands, by the way. But <laughs> I allowed fifteen to seventeen if it was imbalance. You can do a lot with these um, simulation programs. Um, over in the north, I had that so that it would not have an opening hand or a six card suit just because I didn't want the possibility of them to be coming in with our partner. But that's our partner in the north. In this case, it's a seven, eight points. Um, I like the queen excuse me, the jack 10, eight, I'll count that. And I like that I've got a, a t couple tens and then three tens, four tens. So yeah, it's, it's worth all of its values. Over to the east, I said, let's go ahead and make that. So it's always less than six points and um, not if it's in a major where we have like four in the major. So you can see it's just got three points in quackers there and in lefty suit, which in this case, uh, it happens to be a diamond right over here. Um, yeah, nothing going on. They're not going to make a call. Do not bid one spade. And to the south hand, this is just a random hand. And oh my gosh, look at this one. Pretty clear what you're going to do that. You're going to bid um, two hearts, aren't you? Four, eight, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Huh. <laughs> this was just one of, I think, 100 random hands. So in that case, you would do two hearts. Um, it would pass to the west. Back to north, you would say, well, I've got um, two tricks for you. I don't think I have three for you, though. So, hmm, this is a tough call. My king of diamonds, I like that it's behind the opener. Um, that's a plus. That jack ten third. Um, I might just go bump it up one more just to see. I'm not going to bet a side suit or whatever. So, yeah, it would probably be three and then... South, you're going to say, well, how, what's my losers? I've got two in diamonds, two in clubs, and one. You might go. But I don't want to really um, go through all of these with that level of specificity in the interest of time. I want to just show you how these hands look in general. So I'm going to go back here, and we're going to um, go ahead and just take a look at some of these. So the next hand for South, um, it looks to me like a, one club by the... Um, west over there, no doubt about that. And um, do we want to bid one no trump? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I think I would be inclined to. Um, you know, do we borrowing a king? I don't like the four triple three at all. But um, we can see is that um, what is going to happen is that they might pound down the ace king. And see if they can get the partner to unblock the queen. <laughs> but if they don't have the queen, then that suit is not going to be fruitful. So, um, yeah, I would win the third club. And then I would take um, five diamonds. And um, luckily, I get a spade. Well, I got the ace of hearts also. So, you know, it, it's a fine hand to be in that one no trump. And I guess that um, because I don't have um, a hand where I doubled and then bid one no trump, um, yeah, my partner says, well, seven points, we're not, or nine points. I don't know if we're going to go anywhere. But let's just kind of look at some other hands and see if any that kind of looks interesting to us. Uh, okay, one club opener, and our partner's not probably going to bid, even though they've got um, six of them. And me in the south, I've got four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, I don't count that jack. So, man, this is when do I want to do it? I don't want to do a takeout double with a four, three. Some of these hands are going to be a little challenging, as you can see. So let's see if we see one of interest here. That's opening one diamond. And me in the south seat with um, a shortage in diamonds, I am definitely going to do a takeout double. Um, I guess that I also could do one spade, and that's kind of a torn and twixt. Uh, I wish I had something better than ace five times in the spade suit, but my honors are kind of split. So I'd probably still do one spade with that one. Um, yeah, I think I would do one spade. I hope you would too. Next one, um, they open one club and me in the pass that seat. Um, the old aces and spaces hand, 12 points. Hmm. 
yeah, I just think I'm going to pass. You know, it's like, good, you, you've got the auction. Even if I borrow three, I'm not really happy with this one. Next one, um, they're opening one club. They've got a um, black hand, um, five and four. And um, so my partner is, um, well, they're happy that they heard the club bid when they've got six again. And you can see I've got a void. I'm going to be bidding two clubs with this one to say partner. Um, how about the majors? And don't do it when you have higher, more cards in the higher ranking suit, spades, than hearts. But when it's this combination, yeah. Well, I could go on and on, and we're going to save this for another day, but I hope you've got uh, a sense for where we're going. I've got more on the range inquiry statement, so stay tuned on that. But um, let's see if we've got any final comments. Grace, anything coming through? Earth to Grace. You hear me? No, nothing else coming in okay. right now. Sorry to disturb you there. No, but, you um, didn't disturb me. At any rate, so I guess it sounds like if we don't have any comments coming through, I see John is expected. I'm a king. We got that comment. I'm just going to double check one last time. And um, we'll probably be spending, I'm guessing, could be a week on balancing seat bids, I think. There's a lot to this. We'll spend more on the range inquiry statement to make sure you get some good hands and understand that well. See if you like that. But I think you've got the concept of the fact is in the balancing seat, you can borrow a king. If they open one of a major, you got a bigger range because you can't do the takeout doubles, right? So that's part of it. But um, I think on Sunday, we're going to have probably quite a few hands. So if you are either a premium or ultra member on Sunday, we're going to be talking about balancing seat bids with a lot more hands to play. Fortunately, we can't do too many today. Grace, yes, you have something coming in. Patty says that was very helpful. Oh, good, Patty. Well, you know, this um, is kind of funny is that there's so much else in the game of bridge. We oftentimes, we don't get into thinking about balancing seats that much. But I hope that gives you a good foundation. And as I said before, I think when you see all four hands and see what's going on in the ecosystem, you're going to be a lot more potent player. You're going to be looked at as a hero by your partner, and the opponents will... How does the Barbara Seagram says it? They will be fearing you when you sit down at the table and they will be respecting you the morning after. <laughs> so however you want to say it. Yeah, be sure that you know that you can use that, especially when they're in two of a minor or something like that. And they seem like they want to pass out unless they have a misfit. I was playing the other day where it went one diamond, one heart, two diamonds. I'm not so easy to come in making my two spade bid if it was... Um, one heart, two heart, pass, pass. Now I might have six points and four spades, and I'm just going to bid two spades. And my partner better know is that they have, you know, 18 points between them, and my partner's probably got 14, 16 points. I'm just keeping the auction alive, so don't punish me, partner. Grace, one more. Yes, David said, would you use garbage stay man with four equals three equals five equals one and zero to four points. Wow, that is such a good point. I'm going to go ahead to tomorrow, and we're going to take a look at a slide. So let's see. I'm going to go back to the this screen over here. And Grace says, you know, Michael, they want to see your likeness over there. Okay, I'm going to pop up. So we're going to kind of go ahead and look at some of these. Um, Look at that. He already has tomorrow's ready. Wow, yeah. what a guy. So, yeah, we on the range statement, and um, as we have here somewhere, I'm balancing, and I do have a slide there. I'm not going to pull it up now, but it is there. But, yes, the answer to your question, absolutely, you can use a garbage statement beautifully in this situation is where you have a 4-4, um, four, four, Four one or a four four five zero. You bid two clubs and partner wherever you go. And as you remember, once you have the range where you're over twenty points, now you say, well, mm, if I have um, like a lot of quackers, I'm gonna let them play it in one no trump. But if I've got um, a nice suit where I've got some you know meaty honors and mostly primary honors, then you're gonna say, um, let's go ahead and play in a suit contract, please, because you know you're gonna have at least a four four fit. Could be a five four in diamonds. <laughs> So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and let you all do whatever we do at the end of the day. Maybe you're going to play in Bridge Base Online, perhaps, or um, it's dinner time uh, getting close to it. Grace, um, why don't you come on over here and tell us about what's going on with you here today?
Besides the fact that I'm having a bad hair day? Oh, your hair always looks good, darling. I mean, Ta-da. compared to mine, it's like, here, yeah, just, here get, get some of my hair here. Yeah, he's just going <laughs> to take mine. That's right. So, so where are we at? We're in Petaluma. Where are you? Oh, no, I'm in San Francisco. Oh, in fact, oh. I it is nighttime in the Golden Gate Bridge. What are you talking about, Petaluma? Hello. I don't see the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Oh, well, I have to look over there. Look over, look over here. <laughs> so anyway, oh. I think we're, I'm about ready to call a day. What do you have? I have something to show you. Wait. But wait. Grace has got something to share. It's share time. There are times I get distracted. And I do silly things like this. I don't know if you can I think see you're it. on this screen over here. Oh, okay. So. You know, actually, I think I'm going to go to the other screen. If you'll hold on a second. Let's see. We're going to go to this one over here. Um, you can have to come back here to do a focus, though, on that one. This one, actually, go over here. I'm going to go back <laughs> to the A camera. Sorry about that. I know they're getting dizzy, but um, let's see if we can do a focus. No, I don't think it'll focus. No. What is well, it you've got there? I think what I'll have to do is I'm going to have to have it posted on your bridge hand so they can see the studio and all oh, the okay. buttons that you're pushing. We'll just send it to the computer here, and I'll go ahead and put it. Um, I can do JPEGs. Good. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and have some of the studio, but we'll get some videos on that, too. So until then, as always, happy trails to you until we meet again. again. I'll happy be sales, sales to, to you. you. Until... <laughs> anyway, that's oh, it for today. Bye eight bye. o'clock is when everybody starts howling out there. And I think some people already start howling now. So peace out. Bye for now.